Chandu, the magician. Bob, I want you to get back on the train. What? It leaves again in 30 minutes for Cairo. I want you to go back to the hotel and wait till I return. But what are you going to do? I'm going to disappear, Bob. I'm going into another world. A world where you can't follow me. What? There's something malignant, something evil loops in this land, and I've got to find it. Find it and destroy it. I'm going to search the House of Mysteries. In 60 seconds, the American Broadcasting Company will bring you the first act of Chong Du, the magician. A person-to-person expression of international goodwill. That's the way many prominent people, including President Truman and General Eisenhower, have described CARE, the agency that sends needed food packages overseas. CARE offers food and clothing packages which provide more per dollar than individuals can send any other way. For example, a food package costing $10 contains over 22 pounds of staples, enough to supplement the rations of a family of four for one month, and the contents are chosen by top nutritionists. CARE guarantees delivery of any one of its several types of packages. If you'd like to order a CARE package, just send four to $10 to CARE, New York. CARE, New York, and give your name and address specifying to whom you're sending the package. Remember... On delivery, you'll receive a signed receipt from CARE. That address, CARE, New York. And now, our story of magic and mystery. Our story starts in the Negev, that triangle of wasteland at the south of Palestine on the border between Africa and Asia, which the people of Israel are trying to reclaim. But grim terror stalked the Negev, terror in the shape of white-robed assassins, until neither the rabbi in his new temple nor the pioneer farmer on his sandy acres were safe. Chandu, the magician. How much further to be a Sheba, Papa? Tahoeh. Ask this road. Don't bother, Papa Hayam. You must watch the road. Will the roads here ever be like the roads in Europe, Mama? Someday, Chaim. Someday soon. <coughs> oh, what is that? It sounded like a gun. Oh. Papa, Papa, what is it? What's the matter? Papa, we've got off the road. Oh, Papa, I am grabbed the wheel. The brake, the brake, quick. Papa, Papa, what's the matter? Mama, Mama, look. It's shit. Oh, Mama, he's a shot. Oh, Papa. the story, Chandler. There's a band of killers loose in the Negev Desert. Naturally, the Israeli government suspects us in Transjordan, but I swear we know nothing about it. But why have you come to me, Major Stover? Because there's something mysterious about it all. Now, that's why Chubb Pasha sent me on to you, Chandler. The government of Transjordan wants to solve these killings, too. Now, that's why I've been consulting another chap here in Cairo, a Mr. Ismail Nehas. I see. He's also promised to look into it. He's a professor of Arabian history at the Muslim University. Why a professor of history? Let me tell you. The only one of these assassins they've caught so far was a poor, ignorant fellow who'd been drugged to his ears. Hadn't the faintest idea who'd dressed him in that desk dead sheet and and sent him out to do murder. Oh, that's hard. Chandler, did you ever hear the legend of the old man of the mountain? Well, of course, the old medieval yarn. Hassan Saba, the head of the assassins. He drugged his followers before he sent them out to kill. Yes, it was Mr. Nehas who reminded me of the legend. There is a similarity. Now, someone's putting these fellows up to it. 
And he's the man we want you to catch. Oh, sounds a little like looking for a needle in a haystack, Silver. Well, not quite. The focal point for it all seems to be the town of Beersheba. What I mean is this. All these crimes have occurred in an area of which Beersheba seems to be the center. The chap they caught was a Beersheba. Well, what did he do? A porter, camel driver, nothing regular. Beersheba, hmm? The trouble is we can't get anything definite. There's a place on the edge of the town the natives call the House of Mysteries. Some of these white robes have been seen lurking about it. Well, didn't you search it? There's nothing there. It's a ruin. Well, why did they call it the House of Mysteries? Well, that's all tied up in a legend, too. Chandler, did you ever hear of the Veiled Prophet? The Veiled Prophet, why, of course. Well, this House of Mysteries is supposed to have belonged to the Veiled Prophet once upon a time. The whole thing sounds fantastic. Well, the fantastic's your line, isn't it? Chandu, magic and all that. Now, will you help us? I'm taking Nehas up to Beersheba for a look-see. There's a train from Cairo tonight. You can tell Chubb Pasha I'll be on board. Do you think Major Stover missed the train, Uncle Frank? I don't know, Bob. He may be on board. If he doesn't turn up soon, we'll have a look. Some train, huh? I don't know how they got this first-class car on. Usually it's all day coaches on this run. Not very clean ones at that. Who's that? Oh, excuse me, excuse me. I did not know this compartment was occupied. The conductor said most of them were empty. Oh, oh I've oh, got you, ma'am. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> the train lurks. Well, that's quite all right, ma'am. Oh. Now, here, I believe this bag is yours. <laughs> I, I suppose I look like a peddler to you, do I not? Oh. But uh, these packages all are gifts for my grandson, Chaim. You see, I am going to visit my daughter in Beersheba. I have not seen her now for five, no? No, I guess it is six years. Oh, it should be a great pleasure for you. Oh, yes. You are going to Beersheba? Yes, we are. Oh, perhaps you know my daughter, uh, Mrs. Klein. I'm afraid I haven't had the pleasure, Mrs. Uh... Uh, Hirsch. Mrs. Hirsch. Excuse me for interrupting you. Excuse me. I will tell my daughter to look you up, Monsieur Chandu. Excuse me. Uh-huh. Uncle Frank. Yes, ma'am. How do you know your name? She called you Chandu. What? So she did, didn't she? Yes. You know, Bob, I seem to remember her, too. We look in here. Oh, here you are, old man. Oh, hello, Major Stover. Thought you'd missed the train. Uh, I caught it by an eyelash. <laughs> Mr. Nahas has an enormous hamper full of grub he's taking to relatives in Beersheba. No. Uh, here, Mr. Nahas, come in. Oh, thank you. I want you to meet Mr. Chandler, otherwise known as... Chandu, the magician. How do you do, Mr. Chandu? Mr. Nehas, this is my nephew, Bob Regan. Master Hi. Regan? I say, Chandler, that rather stoutish female we just saw in the passage, you know her? No, I don't think so. Uh, didn't she just come out of this compartment? You said she barged in by accident. Are you sure it was an accident, Mr. Chandu? What Nehas means is that she's been following you ever since you left your hotel. What? Is that so, Mr. Nehas? It must be why she frisked me. Frisked you? Yes, yeah, searched me. See whether I was carrying a gun. But uh, what makes you think she was following me, Mr. Nehas? In Cairo, my taxi cab pulled up at Shepard's Hotel just as yours left, Mr. Chandu. I was calling for Major Stover. I see. Uh, I saw that woman point to your cab just as she got into another, as if telling the driver to follow you. Bob. Yes, Uncle Frank? Just step out in the passageway and see what's become of her. Well, she was sure. Any idea why she should be following you, Chandler? Not the slightest. Of course, Nehas, you could have been mistaken. Oh, perhaps. Yes, Bob. She's in the next compartment. Fine, George. She's got her ear glued to the woodwork. She's listening to every word you're saying. Hmm. I wonder what the old girl's up to. Come in. Oh, Mr. Nels, come in. Uh, Stover, will you? No, he's taking a little nap. I see him. Uh, sit down, Wilson. Thank you. The lady hasn't stirred, eh? I noticed when I came past she'd drawn the shades of her compartment. I just can't place her. Well, you've had so many experiences. Uh, Mr. Chandu, uh, what do you think of this, uh, this affair in the Negev Desert? Eh? Mr. Nears, nothing that happens in the East ever surprises me. You are familiar, perhaps, with the old legends of the master of Mount Alamut and the Veiled Prophet? Oh, yes, yes, I've heard of them. To some, they are heroes. But, uh, what was that? Sounded like that old girl. Come along, we'd better look. Uh, wait, son. Wait, wait nothing. She's on the stick. Look out. Yes. What's the matter? What's the matter? 
murder man. Mrs. Hurst. Mrs. Hurst. Oh, What's wrong? He tried to get in through the window. On the outside of the train? Yes. What did you get that gun? My, my, my son-in-law gave the gun to me. I, I never thought I would ever use it. Now, let me get this straight. You mean you saw a man climbing along the outside of the train? Yes, a, a native in a white robe, and he had a knife in his teeth. A knife that was red with... Oh, oh look! Look, 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 there is part of the white robe caught on the broken glass. It must have caught there when he fell. He was coming from that direction? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, but that next compartment is Major Stover's. George, why didn't those shots wake Stover? Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Neal. Stover! Stover! Fight. He's gone. Wait. Stover! He was sitting right there, Mr. Chandu, with his head on his chest. Mr. Neal. Who let down that window? Well, it wasn't open when I left here, Mr. Chandu. Who could get at it with the hamper in the way? Look out. Well, what are you going to do? Search the train. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Come along, Bob. We're here at last. Get away. Get away, all of you. Without Major Stover, what are you going to do? I still know why he asked me to come here to Bersheba, Bob. What do you think happened to him? I think he went out that open window. But how or why, I haven't the faintest notion. Mr. Chandu! Eh? Oh, yes, Mr. Nias. Uh, any of these natives can point out my family's home, Mr. Chandu, where I will be staying. Uh, it is near the British Military Cemetery. So? Uh, perhaps you will call soon and we can discuss this affair. Without Major Stover, I'm at a loss what to do. Of course, Mr. Nails. I will expect you. A good day. Oh, oh Mr. Nails. Uh, uh, yes, my boy? Aren't you forgetting your hamper? Hamper? Isn't that it on the truck over there? Where? Oh, no, no, that is not mine. The porters are taking mine to my family's home. Good day. Good day. Hmm. That's funny. I swear that was his hamper over there on that truck. The one that was in their compartment. Mm, he says not. I saw the porters take his, huh? Excuse me, please. Oh, yes, Mrs. Hurst. You, uh, you never found your friend? No, ma'am. You searched the, uh, hall train? Thoroughly. It is strange you did not find him. Goodbye, Monsieur. Huh. She's a funny old bird. And I'm wondering precisely what she meant. Huh? What? Porter! Don't move that truck! Well, what's the matter, Uncle Frank? Where are you going? Just wait, Porter. Yes, sir, indeed. I want to see that hamper you've got on there. Where's it going? Well, here's the label, Uncle Frank. It's addressed to Chubb Pasha. Who's he? He commands the Transjordan Army. Oh. He's the man who sent Major Stover to see me. Now, just let me take a look in that hamper, Porter. Yes, sir, sir. Oh! What's in it, Uncle Frank? Bob, I want you to get back on the train. What? It leaves again in 30 minutes for Cairo. I want you to go back to the hotel and wait till I return. But what are you going to do? I'm going to disappear, Bob. Huh? I'm going into another world. A world where you can't follow me. What? There's something malignant, something evil loose in this land, and I've got to find it. Find it and destroy it. I'm going to search the house of mysteries. Uncle Frank, you... You found Major Stover, didn't you? Yes, Bob. His dead body is in that hamper. <laughs> In a moment, we'll raise the curtain on the second act of Chandu, the Magician. Many of you who enjoy mystery and adventure dramas also find plenty of thrills in sports. And here's some great news for you. Tomorrow, the American Broadcasting Company will bring you an exclusive broadcast of the National Professional Football Championship. Battling for the title are the powerful Philadelphia Eagles and the tough Los Angeles Rams. And if you've heard about these players early in the season, you know how good they are. ABC sportscaster Harry Wismer will handle the play-by-play -play description, and football's famous Red Grange will provide the colorful asides. Incidentally, this special once-a-year event means that you'll hear several of your regular ABC Sunday features at a different time, but you will hear them. It's a good idea to stay tuned to ABC, and you won't miss a thing. Remember, it's the big national professional championship football game exclusively from ABC tomorrow. Don't miss the battle between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Los Angeles Rams. Now, back to our story of intrigue and magic. The native quarter in Beersheba, 
And in one of the dusty streets under the hard, bright sunshine, a ragged Arabian juggler has spread a tattered carpet and is doing some simple tricks. He looks no different than the small knot of natives watching him. But take a second glance. It's Tom Doo, the magician. Observe, true believers, the wonder of my magic. Are there three date pits or four? Allah give cunning to my old fingers. Salam. Observe, true believers, four pits. <laughs> and this false date pit, the false one, or true believers, by the grace of Allah, the all high, the all powerful, can become in the twinkling of an eye a small deep tree. Look, Lama. A magician. Come away, Chaim. We must go to the candle shop. I wonder why. Observe, true believers. I hide the date pit in the palm of my hand, draw the veil of Fatima across it, and... Salam! A date tree! A tree! Look, Grandma! It's a little tree! Oh, let me put something in his cup! Here, here is a penny. Thanks! Here, magician! Dogs! Dogs of unbelievers! Take back your coin! I take no money from unbelievers! It's a long time. Yes, Grandma! Ah! Take your coin, dogs of unbelievers. Ah, spit on it. Go oh, through the rivers. I am only a simple son of the desert. But why have the foreigners abroad in the land? Why do you not drive them out? I would take this sword of Allah to them myself. Why do you all sneak away? Are all the sons of Allah cowards? These strangers possess the land, juggler. Then drive them out. Drive them out with fire and sword. Are you minded to help? Juggler. Ah, my old fingers itch to be at the throats of the unbelieving dogs. Perhaps my master could use you, Juggler, if you are strong in the faith. None stronger, fat one. Have you walked the streets of Mecca? Have you kissed the sacred black stone? Who is your master? Quiet. My master's name is not to be mentioned aloud. Who is your master? The veiled prophet. Who strikes down the unbelievers in the dark. I think I have heard talk of this veiled prophet. Come tonight to the House of Mysteries. And where is that, that one? Hard by the cemetery of the British soldiers. I know. So the dogs of unbelievers come back. They must not see me talking to you. Tonight, juggler. Tonight. Look, Grandma. I guess the magician's show is over. He's folding up his carpet. Bad dogs. I do no tricks for unbelievers. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> It is a very good disguise, Monsieur Chandu. Almost, you have fooled me. <laughs> Positively, I must find out who that old woman is. Oh, oh there is a knife at your throat. Who are you? Ah. Oh, it is you, juggler. Are you still strong in the faith? Where is your master? Where is the veil one? Are you sure you want to see him, juggler? I am strong in the faith and anxious to strike a blow at these unbelieving dogs. Good. Then this night you will sup in paradise, juggler. What? What is this? What are you doing? A blindfold. Do you think we allow everyone to learn the secrets of the House of Mysteries? Now give me your hand, juggler. This way. Wait. Go on, juggler. You hear? You are on the threshold of paradise. Down on your knees, juggler. You are before your master, the veiled prophet. Down! Who is this, fat one? A juggler from the desert, master. Whose hand is eager to strike down the unbeliever. Hold on, you Lola. Take that rag of his face so I can see him. Tell him to look up. Look up, Chuckler. Look at the veiled prophet. So he would sup this night in paradise, eh? Well, so he shall. But not quite as he thinks. <laughs> Lucy Marie, see that false juggler. Oh, no, no, you don't. <laughs> Now pull. Pull. 
But who is he, Master? Sandu, a spy, a secret agent. <laughs> so you thought you could learn my secrets, eh? <laughs> Pull the cord tighter. <laughs> Oh, still, I say. Oh. Do not fidget, Monsieur Chandu. Take a deep breath. It is spirits of ammonia. No. <coughs> take, it, take it away. So, you are better? Who are you? Who? You, Mrs. Hirsch. Good evening, Monsieur Chandu. How do you feel now? Where did you come from? Where am I? You are in the British military cemetery. Cemetery? Oh, Oh, I know your neck is sore, but if you will turn your head to the right a little, you can see your newly filled grave. My grave? Yes, where you are supposed to be buried. You know you were supposed to be buried. Tomorrow, when the sun has baked and you return to earth for an hour, your grave will look like all the others. Oh, I am very sorry, Monsieur Chandu. I told Ali, that big Nubian, not to pull the cord too tight. You told the Nubian? <laughs> In this country, Monsieur Chandu, with a very little money, one can accomplish a great deal. Now, will you please tell me precisely what happened to you? The Nubian, though greedy, is a fool. <laughs> and besides, his tongue was cut out when he was six years old. Yeah, wait. Let me sit up. Yeah, <laughs> Mrs. Hirsch, exactly who and what are you? First, answer me one question, Monsieur Chandu. What is your interest in all this business? Well, Major Stober asked me to look into this, this nightmare in the naked desert. Said oh. the Israeli government suspected Transjordan of instigating the killings. Oh, I understand now why that hamper was labeled to Chubb Pasha. Yes, a gentle hint from someone that he was to mind his own business. I saw Stover flitting about Beersheba here, and when he went to Cairo, I followed him. When he visited you, I was curious. Naturally, I know your reputation. Mrs. Hirsch, who are you? The late Dr. Gebbels once called me the modern Mata Hari. Great Scott. Of course, I was younger and, if I do say so myself, prettier. Now I placed you. Have a wee's Hirsch. Yes, we. <laughs> you were a secret agent for the French in 38 and 39. Yes. But what are you doing here in Palestine? We all do what we can, Monsieur Chandu. I am working for the Israeli government. Then you've been down here investigating these killings, too. Will you please stop talking, Monsieur Sandu, and tell me what happened to you? I saw the veiled prophet. The who? I don't understand these people. This fellow's been using all the old tricks. He's got them believing he's a veiled prophet who's come to rule them. It's an old legend of theirs. They also think he might be the old man of the mountains, the head of the assassins. But who is he? That's what we're going to find out. Come along. <laughs> place, Mrs. Hirsch? Yes, the natives call it the house of mysteries, but there is nothing here. The only mystery is how it uh, has stood so long. And this is where I met Abdullah. Hmm? He's the fat, oily one. You'll have to pick him up. Yes, I have had an eye on him. He's the recruiting officer. Finds the candidates to do the prophet's dirty work. Mm -hmm. I met him here. He blindfolded me and led me this way. And we stopped about here. But there is nothing here. And stepped over here. You could tell he was reaching up. Yeah, here's his projecting stone. The wall moves. Look, a stairway going down. The threshold of paradise, he called it. I think it is the threshold of hell. This way. Right. I hear something. Yeah, it's the fat one. Ah. He must not get away to warn the other one. Put the gun away. I'll stop him. But how? Watch. Stop. You can go no farther, Abdullah. You cannot move. Chandu, what have you done? Look, he, he claws the air as if it were an invisible wall. There is a wall there, which he cannot pass till I give the word. Come. Master! Master! Help! Abdullah! Help! For the love of Allah! Stand still. Take us to your master. But I cannot pass. You see the wall. There is nothing there now. It is sorcery. I've got a good grip on you, Abdullah. Go on, take us to your master. Take us to the Veiled Prophet. He is in there. Go on, don't stop. 
This is hers. Look. You can see him. It's like an image carved out of stone. And he is veiled. You cannot see his face. What do you want, fat one? Why do you come to disturb me? I am spinning a web that will tangle the whole world. You, you have uh, visitors, master. What? Chandu, still alive. Don't move, prophets. I do not know how you escaped, Chandu. But I am grateful you have returned. The servants of Hassan Saba do not fail twice. Hurry! It is no use, prophet. Ali will not come. He is gone. You, you woman, you police spy. And all your white-robed men are gone, too. For two hours, the whole quarter has been surrounded by the police. And now, thanks to Chandu, I have found you, Spider. Let me get my own hands on your throat. Don't move, brother. I shall strangle you myself. Oh. Oh. I wanted him alive, Monsieur Chandu. One doesn't take chances with a disordered brain, Mrs. Hirsch. But who is he? Haven't you guessed? Pull back the veil. Mr. Nehas, the little Egyptian. But he seems such a harmless little fellow. The professor of history. No, Mrs. Hirsch. When he sat there, he thought he was Hassan Saba, the head of the assassins, or the veiled prophet. We'll never know all the dark thoughts that raced through his brain. You see, he was quite mad. Gee, what a story, Uncle Frank. Was Nehas really mad? As a hatter, Bob. I heard rumors about him in Cairo. And he spent a winter in a sanitarium in Switzerland. His family sent him... Family home was across the road from the House of Mysteries. And that's where the passage led. But when were you sure? On the train. How do you suppose the man who knifed poor Stover and was coming after Mrs. Hirsch got on board? I don't know. How did he? He was in that hamper Mr. Nehaus brought on the train. You see, when Nehaus left to visit me, that man crept out of the hamper and stabbed Stover and then started after Mrs. Hirsch. Then he was supposed to come after me. You? Sure. Nehaus meant to wipe us all out. But there's only one thing I don't understand. How you stopped that fellow in the passage of the House of Mysteries... There was nothing there, but but he couldn't get by. He couldn't run away. Magic, Bob. Nothing but magic. In a moment, we'll bring you a glimpse of next week's story. Here's a reminder to you local businessmen. Just as you enjoy radio, so your neighbors and friends are regular listeners to programs of this ABC station. Why not use the radio programs you're now hearing as a way to promote sales and goodwill for your business or product? You'll be surprised to know how reasonably and effectively you can sponsor Chandu the Magician in this, your own locality. Just call on the manager of this ABC station. He'll be glad to give you all the details about Chandu the Magician. And now here's a reminder for everyone. Tomorrow night, it's time for fun on Stop the Music. Yes, every Sunday evening, this great show comes to you over most of these ABC stations. And as MC Burt Parks keeps the laughs rolling, contestants identify tunes being played by Harry Salter's orchestra. So don't miss the mystery melody on Stop the Music tomorrow evening over most of these same ABC stations. And now, for next week's story. Next week, Chandu delves into the mysteries of ancient Egypt. How terror struck when the mummy moved. Chandu the Magician is based on the original radio drama created by Harry A. Earnshaw and is written by Frank Dom. Frank Chandler is played by Tom Collins. Musical effects are by Paul Taubman. This is a Cyril Armbister production. We invite you to listen next week to mystery, romance, magic. John Doo, the magician. Jimmy Blaine speaking. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>